I'm the Game Professor, and welcome to Games as Lit 101. We can, and I'm sure probably will, debate the specifics of how, when, and why video games are art until, well, pretty much the end of time. But one thing that I do feel confident claiming, without reservation or exception, is that all video games aim to make you feel something. Some examples are obvious. There are a lot of story-heavy games that put a lot of effort into conveying sadness, and horror games are obviously designed to make you feel fear. That's kind of the entire thing of the genre. But even simpler games are designed to invoke some kind of feeling. Missile Command is made to make you feel hopeless. Kind Words is made to make you feel understood and supported. Super Mario Brothers is made to make you feel happy and entertained. All games aim to make you feel... something. But it is, of course, also possible for a game to do this poorly and fail at properly getting that emotion across to the player. Sonic 06, because the low-hanging fruit is usually the easiest to talk about, obviously aims to make the player feel the thrill of speed, to make them feel fast and cool. But since Sonic 06 is bad at pretty much everything, it doesn't succeed at this. But that doesn't mean it didn't try. That's still part of its identity, even if it failed pretty miserably at it. Today, we're talking about a game that succeeded in establishing what it wanted its players to feel, in contrast with its own failure to do so just one game prior in the series. That is, we're talking about Titanfall 2. And for context, we're going to have to start by talking a little bit about Titanfall 1. Titanfall was a multiplayer military shooter with one major twist. Mechs. Call of Duty may reward killstreaks with improved radar functionality or airstrikes, but Titanfall delivers a giant mech from the skies and lets you climb in and wreak havoc on your enemies from the cockpit of a giant mechanical monster. Titanfall was a multiplayer-only title, but that doesn't mean it's not trying to make the player feel something. Multiplayer shooters certainly aren't as emotionally focused as single-player story-based games, for instance, but nonetheless, they do still try to make the player feel powerful, or tense, or like part of something bigger than themselves. And Titanfall, if anything, was a little more clear and upfront at exactly what emotion it wanted to inspire in players. Titanfall wants you to feel awe. This is undoubtedly part of the more general and nearly universal feeling of power that these games go for. Most shooters want you to feel powerful, and it's hard not to when you're in the cockpit of a Titan. But that comes with a balance. For all the time the player spends in a Titan, they generally spend far more time as a puny little human running and fighting while these colossal metal terrors conduct their own battles around them, and sometimes even against them. Even the time in a Titan feels less like a power trip and more like a kaiju battle. You're evenly matched at this point against other Titans, so rather than feeling like a giant squishing insect, you're just battling it out like always but on a much larger scale. Point being, the power of controlling a Titan isn't an absolute, constant element of playing Titanfall, but the awe of beholding these giant war machines, whether from their cockpits or their crosshairs, absolutely is. Respawn Entertainment knew this as they were advertising Titanfall, of course. Countless articles and interviews and reviews of the game talked about this sense of awe, usually by zeroing in on one specific moment, the titular Titanfall. Obviously, this did come across in the original game, but its identity as a multiplayer shooter meant it couldn't really ensure a positive experience early on to establish this feeling. You could call a titan down just to be shot by some rando and have your mech hijacked, or get in a mech just to be swiftly destroyed by someone who's somehow prestiged like ten times despite the game only being out for two days. See, this is usually what campaigns are for. Uh, not exclusively, obviously. A good campaign has a whole lot more to offer than just prepping the player for multiplayer modes, but when the two modes are both in the same game, this is the main way that they interact with each other. Looking to Halo as a classic example, the campaign teaches the player the basics and continually introduces new weaponry, vehicles, and mechanics over the course of the story. By the time the player has viewed the destruction from the safety of the Pelican, they could jump into multiplayer already knowing how each of the weapons and vehicles work, which they prefer, and how they should act to give themselves at least a decent shot at winning in multiplayer. But what's more, what sense of awe and mystery exists in the multiplayer modes is only really there because of the campaign. The player isn't generally going to worry about things like that in a 4v4 CTF shoddy snipe match on Blood Gulch anyway, but players who went through the campaign can look up and see that ring stretching through the sky, can use strange alien weaponry that doesn't function like our own, and some of that feeling is retained because it was set up in a more tightly controlled single player environment beforehand. I use Halo as an example here instead of continuing to talk about the first Titanfall because... Uh, Titanfall didn't have a campaign, per se. 
What it did have was a series of voiceovers from characters in the Titanfall universe that played over a number of multiplayer matches that the player would participate in. And, uh, that was it. <laughs> it was easily one of the most ill-conceived stabs at a story mode I've ever seen. The result was that this sense of awe may have been present in Titanfall, but it never really got a chance to come across as strongly as it could have in a more tightly crafted experience. Which is why Titanfall 2 was the perfect opportunity to fix that with its, you know, actual story-based campaign. And I want to talk about how the game does it, because I think it pulls it off rather splendidly. The opening segment of any game has a few things it has to accomplish. As a game, it has to introduce the player to the core mechanics. As a story, it has to introduce the player to the protagonist, the world it takes place in, and the dangers, stakes, and goals of their specific situation. And on a broader experience, it also has to give the player at least a taste of the main feeling it wants to evoke. The tutorial and the opening level of Titanfall 2 do all of these things just fine, but I want to focus specifically on the third one, how it's specifically crafted to build up a sense of awe and appreciation for the scale and power of these machines. Early on, it goes to lengths to avoid showing its cards. What follows is a pretty standard military shooter tutorial in the form of the protagonist's mentor running him through some pilot training. Movement, shooting, all that basic stuff, including Titanfall's signature mobility options like wall running, double jumping, etc. But the tutorial stops short of teaching the player how to use a Titan, instead ending the simulation training abruptly just as a Titan is about to fall. Again, stopping short of giving the player that sense of awe quite yet. Teasing them, but not quite delivering. This building of anticipation is a big part of what makes this all work, but it is still only a part. See, in Titanfall 2, the protagonist isn't a pilot with all the cool mobility options and equipment that Titanfall players are used to. He's just a normal everyday soldier. The player gets a preview of being a pilot in the tutorial, but the game immediately strips them of that power and puts them on the ground as a regular human soldier. This gives them a taste of relative powerlessness, but it's not just about how they move or what they can do. This first segment is designed very much like a traditional shooter. It's a narrow, linear path, and without a titan or the enhanced mobility options of a pilot, the player is confined to gameplay that might, in a typical shooter, feel perfectly normal. But here, it feels stifling. After the freedom of movement and that little bit of pilot training, the player feels very limited and powerless now, a feeling that's only reinforced when an enemy titan knocks them off their feet and they have to just watch helplessly as two titans duke it out above them. This is definitely awe-inspiring, but crucially, it lacks the element of power that Titanfall generally wants to give to the player. This is awe without agency. In other words, it's more like fear. Watching something wild and dangerous unfold beyond your control, knowing you're right in its path and can't do a thing about it. The game is starting to deliver on this sense of awe, but the perspective here is very intentional. The player now knows how it feels to be a bug on a battlefield of giants. They look up and see the enormity of this power well before they get a chance to wield it themselves. When the protagonist wakes up, they find their mentor mortally wounded inside his damaged titan, and it falls on the player to take his place. The player finally gets some pilot equipment, which means wall running and cool jumping and all that, but has to go find some parts to fix the titan itself. The game is finally starting to actually and unconditionally give the player some of its core mechanics and let them feel like a little more than just your average video game shooter guy, but it is still holding out a bit. The level that unfolds allows the player to experiment with their abilities and the fast-paced, versatile forms of movement Titanfall has to offer. Even so, these abilities are unlocked and explained one by one over the course of the level. A good first level often includes this kind of tutorializing, introducing the player to certain gameplay elements in such a way that naturally teaches them how to play without much need for explanation or info dumps. And this level certainly does that, but more relevant to our purposes is how that process is used to slowly introduce the player to more power after a sequence of near total powerlessness. It contributes to setting up a sense of appreciation for the player's abilities rather than simply taking them for granted. Eventually, the player does manage to repair BT, and since this is a single-player experience instead of a frantic multiplayer battle, it takes advantage of its ability to control pacing. Right. Protocol 1. Link to Violet. Establishing Neural Link. Neural Link established. 
then they finally get to actually control a Titan, and eventually fight another one as well. Piloting a Titan is, of course, where Titanfall really leans on this idea of the power fantasy. This is where it wants the player to feel like a badass, but there's something almost reverent and earned in that fantasy in this game because it takes the time to properly build up to it. This first level is perfectly paced and plotted to give the player a real appreciation for how powerful the Titans are, because they can't take it for granted. They didn't have this power the whole time, they had to gain it after being in the crosshairs of these colossal machines for a while first. It doesn't just inspire awe by showing the player something awesome, but by using the story and the way that this level progresses to put the player in the best possible position to really appreciate how awesome these machines are. And after that, it finally feels like the game really earns that gasp when your play is rewarded by a titan falling at your feet.